Afternoon, Cherries fans, and welcome to this back and net special, a reaction to the 4-2 win against Reading at Dean Court on Saturday. To do this, I welcome another former Reading player, someone who also played for Leeds, Doncaster and Blackpool, whilst also playing north of the border. Since retiring, he's actually managed internationally, um, but it's a welcome, a pleasure to welcome to back and net, Dylan Kerr. How are you doing, Dylan? I'm good, Craig, and you know, it's... Uh... You, you've caught us in South Africa. It's a bit cloudy today. Still 30 degrees, but it's a bit cloudy and, and it started to rain. Yeah, so boiling hot, but um, it, to be fair, out there, it's not too bad at the moment. A bit grey, but... Uh, <laughs> so, um, before we begin, I just wanted to bring something back from my past and, and a bit of a memory. You're actually the first player that... I actually met. So there was a little barn next to Elm Park called Royal's Rendezvous. You probably yeah. remember it. Um, Very well. And at, the time, <laughs> <laughs> at the time, I actually ventured out with programming so and got you to sign that. And we had a really good conversation about football and the game that day. From Twitter, of course, I've seen you, you talk to fans of many teams. Do you feel that's something that's missing at the moment, Dylan? Yeah, I do because I think you know, you know, from from when I played, and 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 as well now as I'm I'm coaching uh, over here in Africa, you, you I've got a responsibility as a, as a as a as a football fan to 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 engage you know with with local people with 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 people all over the world, and I think now football players um, a lot of you know, these you know Premiership stars, uh, Championship um, legends of that are playing now, they, they've got social media, but they don't interact with fans now. It's all about me, 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 me. It's what I'm doing. And, you know, they don't they don't interact with fans uh, and, and it's changed. And I think, you know, I always, I always, you know, gave a lot of time, you know, even mm. like I said with you when I was at Reading, um, you know, to spend time with the fans and, and, and be engaged with them because at the end of the day, they're, they're the ones that are paying your wages because they, they, not now, because obviously they're not allowed to watch the games. But, you know, the supporters are the backbone of any football club. And I've always felt important um, to, to keep, you know, in, in dialogue with supporters. Good, bad, some indifferent, some are, you know, very, very rude. Yeah. And um, you, you just just interact with them and, and they respect that. And, and they like it as well. And they like it as well. Yeah, most definitely. It makes people's day especially the younger fans as well. Um, and that's something that we've always had at Bournemouth, at Reading in the, back in the day as well. It was great to speak to you and actually get your perspective as well, growing up, um, being a massive football fan. What sort of memories do you have of playing uh, against Bournemouth during your career? Well, I mean, obviously we, we, we won the league the previous week when when we got promoted and we were, we were champions, so we went yeah. to Bournemouth and and I remember Jimmy Quinn, he he wanted to win that game so much, and mm. obviously we'd won the league and we wanted to finish on a high, and I, I actually we we lost two one and I actually gave the ball away for the winning goal, and I remember in the dressing room Jimmy Quinn wanted to absolutely beat the living daylight out of me because it kind of spoiled spoiled the day for him. You know, and mm. uh, <laughs> I remember going back on the bus, you know, we, we were all celebrating. Obviously, we'd won the league and we'd become champions before that Bournemouth game. But mm. I remember Quinn was so angry and I, I, don't think he's, I don't think he's ever forgiven me for that. <laughs> um, because like I said he, he, he wanted to do, he wanted to finish that game off, the season off, as he did top scorer. You know, the best striker in the league, you know, that year. Probably in all the leagues, you know, mm -hmm. and... Uh, playing against Bournemouth that last game of the season, yeah, we, we all wanted to go out with a win, but, you know, yeah. we, we lost the game to one and Quinny was, Quinny was raging at me, raging at me. I, I honestly thought it was going to punish me. But, um, you know, if you, if you can imagine, I'd played, I, I was actually at the at the game Bournemouth versus Leeds when Leeds got promoted in 89-90. Oh, yes. You know, I was there, I was, um, I was always in the squad. You remember that in them days, there were only two substitutes. You know, and yes. I was the old unlucky. I was the 14th man, but I would mm. go down there, and you know, my, my job was to, you know, my job actually was to, to warm the goalkeepers up. You know, so yeah. I was on the pitch that day, 
I mean, it's a blistering hot day. It was absolutely, I mean, it was fantastic. The Leeds fans came in the thousands. Yes, there was mm. a bit of trouble, but, you know, back in the day, that, that, that was football. It, I don't think it, you know, it was as bad as what, what everybody meant it out to be. But, you know, I, I can remember the Bournemouth players and the Bournemouth staff were absolutely fantastic that day when Leeds got promoted because it basically Leeds United took over that ground, you know, and, and it was a great occasion. So I've had, I've had good memories that, uh, that when I played against Bournemouth. What did you see of the game on Saturday? Um, I, obviously, I read it on Twitter because Eddie Williams and uh, a very good friend of mine, Paul Tanner, who's a, a Reading diehard, he's he, he always keeps me up to date. They had a good start, and now they've 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 lost. I think they won three and lost five, you know, on the bounce. And you know, they, he's, qu- he's quickly turned the other way. Everybody was cheering and shouting the praise the first three games. Now the the, the diehards are, are being very critical but you know if you lose you're going to get criticised you know, but it's good to see that Bournemouth are actually picked up because they you know life back in the championship a new manager new players you know the the the, the, the pressure's on them to, to kind of bounce straight up to the Premier League but that doesn't happen uh, in football very often um, you know but and, and, and they've got to rebuild you know they, they've, they've sold some they've lost some good players they've sold good players um, and finding that that Balance now in in the championship, you know, is it's all about winning your home games, and and getting three points away. If not, try and get a point here, there, and maybe lose one or two. But I think both both clubs are going to find it difficult in the championship, especially with this COVID virus. You know, with no supporters. Yes. I, our home, our home stadium in Toyando, where is like seven hours from Johannesburg. Now. Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates are the biggest teams. You know, when, when yeah. they play together, there's 90,000. When we play in our stadium, if, and, and we've always, Black Leopards have always been in the bottom half of the table. They, they've they struggled, but they've always sold out. They, they always get 15, 20,000 in their ground. On Saturday, yeah. they played with nothing. And and the, and honestly, they, they're so crazy, these fans. It's it's electric when, they, when they're in that stadium. But because the, the, they're not allowed to go there, there was no there was no atmosphere, and you could see the it affects the players because them fans yeah. get behind the players. You know, one hundred percent win, lose or draw, they are one hundred percent behind the players, and you could see the difference. And I think that's affecting the likes of Bournemouth, Reading, you know, Leeds United, you know, Man United, all the big clubs. I think they're all struggling with that. So. You know, I, I hope Bournemouth, you know, do well this year. I hope they, they, they can challenge, you know, for minimum playoffs because they've got a good squad and they've got good players and they've got a good manager. He's taken over from... from well, I thought Eddie Howe might have had a chance at a bigger job because of what he's done, you know, and yeah. I followed a few training sessions um, from the LMA, you know, which, which I've introduced into South Africa, which is which is very good, really. And, and it's easy, it's understandable and... The players enjoy, it. and 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 like I said, I've, n- I've not met Eddie, uh, I've not spoken mm-hmm. to Eddie, but you know, I, I you know I respect him as a coach because he's done what I've never been able to do, coaching England, but he's done even more. Great, he got them right to the top, uh, and had yeah. a lot of success. Um, finally, as we saw at the weekend, both Reading and Bournemouth look strong teams. Do you expect them to both be at the top end of the Championship at the end of the season, Dylan? I I think. Um, I think both teams have got to be winning the home games. I think teams come down to Bournemouth. They, <laughs> we used to go down when we used to go down down to Bournemouth. It was always a night out. You know, we play the yeah. game and then we we're in the night. Then we we're in the nightclubs. You know, and 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 now that's gone now. So teams come down to Bournemouth. They 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 trying not to get beat by Bournemouth. So they make it difficult. They'll be defensive and they'll go on. Uh, they'll play counter attacking football. So if they can make their home ground a fortress and win as many games as they can, they will be knocking on the door. And if they can get in the playoffs, they've always got a chance of qualifying, uh, you know, in, in third place in, in the playoff place. Um, Reading, I don't know. They started well. They started well, and it's kind of everybody was happy. Now it's gone the other way. So the next mm. two or three games are going to be very important uh, for both clubs, you know, because. After Christ, after Christmas is when you start to push for for for, for the for the playoff places to get in the top into the top six. 
So it's important that they win the Christmas period, um, get through January, February, and then Easter period. That's when you'll know if they're going to be serious title contenders or uh, be pre- playoff hopefuls. And hopefully, they'll be in the top three, top four. Both teams will be in the top three or top four um, when, when it comes to the the East the Easter program, because that's when uh, results count after Easter. Fingers crossed. The ideal season for me is for both clubs to go up automatically. Being from Reading and living down in Bournemouth since uh, 2008, when Bournemouth were on the minus 17 points. Um, so that is my ideal season. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed. What, what would your top three predictions be? Oh, well, obviously, I'd like Reading to go up. I played for Reading, um, and I've got still I've got a, a big affiliation with 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 the club and the former players. Um, and obviously, Michael J- Michael Jilts is the academy manager now, so um, it's it'd be nice for them to to at least make the playoffs and give themselves a chance. Um, you know, my home team's Barnsley, so you you want your home team obviously to to stay yeah. in the championship. Look like they did last year by the skin of the teeth, and I think from experience, when Reading should have got promoted that year into the Premier League, when they only had one team up, one team down, you know, and yeah. and, and we ended up in the playoffs against Bolton Wanderers, um, you know. So, you, you, with football the way it is at the moment, everybody's got a chance. You, you, nobody's nobody's favourites, nobody's title contenders, nobody's mm. um, relegation favourites, but clubs. Like Bournemouth and like Reading, they they've got to set themselves a target every month of how many games they can win, how many points they're going to lose, you know, and try and say, well, hang on, we can we can get we can at least get a point here, we can get a point there, you know, but we want three points at home, we want three points at home. Oh, and this is now Riley. This is she's one years old. And this is uh, Riley's sister. <laughs> Good kid. No, it's been a pleasure, Dylan. Thank you so much. All right, Craig. Listen, I ho- I hope it's gone okay. I hope, I hope the interview went well and you enjoyed it. And say bye-bye, <laughs> bye-bye. 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 bye bye, Riley. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. But later on this afternoon, we'll have our opposition preview ahead of Nottingham Forest. And remember, on Wednesday, we've got our interview with Kevin Bond. And join us for the reaction after Forest in the free for all and TG's player ratings. Until then, up the cherries and see you in the next video.